So you bought a bunch of models on Friday, you need to play a game on Sunday. Can you do them all in the grimdark style in one weekend? Yes, you can. Hello, my name is Eric and I'm your Lord Commander. Welcome. Really, who doesn't love a good zombie horde? So today I'm going to share with you a personal challenge of mine. Painting an entire zombie horde in one weekend. I have 40 Deadwalker zombies here, and these guys are from the Soul Blight Grave Lord's Army in Age of Sigmar. Like you didn't already know that. There isn't much I really don't like about these guys. They have great detail, they look like authentic villagers, and when they're all together, they look really formidable on the battlefield. So I'm going to give myself from Friday evening to Saturday afternoon to complete these 40 zombies, bases and all. I have a few hours each day to complete the project, so let's get started. All right, so it's Friday evening, and I want to get these zombies done by Sunday afternoon. So I got all my paints laid out. I have my project plan right here. I'm getting ready to assemble these bad boys. So let's see how we do. First off is the obvious. We're going to assemble the zombie horde. This is my first time assembling such a large amount of models in one go. One of the things that was a bit fiddly was the arms on the female models. You kind of had to angle them a certain way to get them to fit. But once they were in their intended pose, they kind of magically bound, and then I was able to move on to the next one. I did skip assembling a majority of the grave markers on these guys. I figured it would add a lot of unneeded complexity in trying to speed paint them. So I did four in total, just one of each, so I could get the kind of cool, interesting look without having to add too much uh, unnecessary steps. And now that the horde is all assembled, I'm going to move on to working on the bases. Yep, that is right. I'm going to be doing all the bases on these guys. It's going to be simple, but it's not going to be basic. Just not simple ground texture. I'm going to have some tufts and some rocks built in there. For the bases, I used some stones from the craft store and some ballast sand and glued them all in unique patterns for each base. After that was all done, these models are ready for primer. I'm using a two-step priming process for these guys, and since we're going to be speed painting, I chose a Rust Oleum 2-in-1 paint and primer. This will give us a nice sickly blue and green base coat for the zombie skin. And since it's 2-in-1, it's going to save us a lot of time not having to paint the base coats on with a brush. After the base coating prime step was done, I hit them all with the Zenithal Prime from above. I'm using Scale 75 Instant Colors Bone Charm for this step. This primer is a great creamy off-white which will give our highlights a little bit of warmth that you don't get with just a pure white. Alright, so it's uh, Saturday morning and I got all of my assembly and priming done yesterday. So I'm um, going to start the painting uh, process today. We'll see how quick I can get these done. I only have a uh, couple hours in the morning and then a couple hours in the evening to work on these. So let's see how we do. Starting out with the weapons and wood bits, I'm going to be using Wildwood from Games Workshop Contrast Line. If you haven't used Wildwood, it has really good coverage straight from the pot, so I'm just going to be using uh, one coat and calling it done. After I was done with the weapons and wood bits, I moved on to the clothing. I wanted these zombies to have authenticity like they were just average villagers brought back from a grizzly end using four different colors nothing fancy these geeks are an aristocrat so I went with hardened leather aged hide camo cloak and cloudburst blue and I just slapped these on all over the clothing I did this in a semi-random fashion I had equal counts of blue and green zombies so I divided them up evenly into batches of 10 and did all the prominent clothes in each color some of these zombies still have their grubby locks, so I chose two different contrast colors and went with Iandian Yellow as a blonde and Gravelord Gray for the oldies. Alright, next we're going to move on to the weapons, and we don't know how long these guys have been buried or where they even got their weapons from, so we're going to give them a nice aged look here with a nice mix of colors. Since we're going for a grimdark on these weapons, I went with a mix of polished silver from Army Painter and a single drop of both German Brown 
and orange brown from Vallejo to dull that silver. Lastly, to just give a touch of luster was some Pro Acrylic Metallic Medium. Using this kind of mixture really sells that old metal worn out look. Now this is a point in the project where I kind of unintentionally slowed myself down and I'm going to explain why. So I thought that doing the basing ground and painting in one step was going to save me a bit of time, but it actually ended up adding an extra hour to the process, just trying to be extra careful not getting the ground texture on any areas that I've already painted. Hey, I'm new to speed painting. This is my first time doing more than six models in a clip. So I'm actually pretty grateful that I learned something new about my process and how I can be better in the future. So after all that tedium of doing the ground basing, I was really excited to get back to my speed paints and uh, make some better progress. So I took out some ashen stone from Army Painter and started working on all the rocks and uh, detail areas of the bases just to give them a little more variety. All the rocks and ground cover are going to get a wash later which will make it look more cohesive and complete. But right now they're just a little bit light, but no worries there, once I add this wash they're going to pop. All right, now that we are almost out of the ugly phase, I want to punch up the contrast on the base. And for this step, I'm gonna be using a burnt umber acrylic ink from Whole Bean. So I thin this down until it had about the consistency of water. This ink is very potent and really opaque and I wanted to kind of tone it down and get it into those fine detailed recesses that are all over the rocks and bits on these bases. All right, now it's time for that big boy step that's really gonna make these guys uh, pop and get a little punchy bit of contrast on the table. So for this step, I'm going to be using six different oil washes. I'm going to be using a black, a burnt umber, a magenta, a verde green, and a yellow ochre to kind of give the skin some tinting and variance. These washes are going to give us an already sickly tone to the mottled skin we did in that two-in-one primer. What you want to do is mix a good amount of odorless white spirits into your oil paint. I'm using an odorless turpenoid for this step, but you can use any that you like. Take a small amount of oil paint and mix a decent amount of white spirit with it. You're gonna want that consistency of water, but when it runs down on your palette, you're gonna want like an almost full coverage coming down the side. What you're looking for here in this step is a bit of a slurry. It's gonna look thick, but it's gonna be smooth and runny like water. And mixing your oil washes is significantly cheaper than buying any from the hobby store. I worked in batches of 10 doing random colors. I let them dry for about 20 minutes before I gently buffed off the oil wash from the high areas only. These oil washes give a tremendous grimy grim dark effect. Try them out on your next project and see how they work for you. They're surprisingly easier than they sound. So these zombies will be slashing and biting their way through some adversaries very shortly, but to get them ready, we're gonna add some chipping effects to the weapons now. All right, it is Sunday morning and I'm ready to start the final steps. Uh, completed all of my base coats and oil washes um, yesterday, so that was super exciting. Uh, one of the things that kind of slowed me down a little bit was the oil washes. I think I got my ratios um, uh, uneven a little bit. So what happened was I had to buff a few areas, uh, set them aside, and then come back and get um, uh, different portions of the model. So. That's just one of the one of the things that kind of slowed me down, but uh, got a I got a great feeling about today. Uh, I'm gonna be doing all my pigments and uh, doing my uh, cool blood mixture that I got from an old Ninjan video. So I'm uh, looking forward to trying that out. So let's get to it. And it wouldn't be a proper grim dark without some rust effect on all these weapons. I'm using reddish brown from Scale 75 Pigment Color Soil Works. 
and I'm dabbing this into the areas of the weapons where the rust would form. If you haven't used these pigment powders from Scale 75, I really recommend them. They have such a great effect to all these models. Alright, in keeping with that same theme, have you ever seen a clean zombie? So I'm going to keep using my Soilworks products and I'm going to use my Dark Earth pigment powders next. So I'm going to be using this to dingy up all the feet, legs, and pants of these zombies. I want them to have that I just climbed out of the dirt look. These geeks didn't stop at the laundromat on the way to the battlefield. <laughs> be dirty. All right, now just a couple more effects to try and these guys are gonna be complete. I'm getting really excited now. Next, I'm gonna rim all the bases by using a bat in black. I chose not to do this step last as I have some special effects planned to finish these guys off and make them properly grim duck. Once the bases were dry and I can handle them, I started working on the gore. These zombies love eating brains and guts, so using a blood recipe from an old Ninjan video, I mixed some Tamiya Clear Red, Uhu Glue, and a little bit of dark brown to get a nice, stringy, gory texture. Now this dries really quick, so I'm going to be working in batches and using an old sacrificial brush. This uh, Uhu Glue will dry very quickly and will trash your brush, so when you have an old one that's ready to go, you can use it for this kind of process. Now that that old gory effect is done, we're gonna add some fresh blood to these guys. Using everyone's favorite, I grabbed some blood for the blood god and dotted it strategically around the bodies and bases. So now that these guys are looking good and nasty like they had a delicious human feast, we're gonna add a finishing touch to the bases with some Wasteland Tufts from the Army Painter. I use a small dab of super glue for some extra grab on these guys. I don't want these tufts coming off as we move these around the battlefield. And after that final step of tufts, our grimdark zombie horde is complete. These zombies look fearsome, aggressive, and properly grimdark. I couldn't be more proud of how they turned out. Over the weekend, I spent probably 15 hours from Friday evening to Sunday afternoon on these guys. I had so much fun putting these guys together that I might have to start my own Soul Blight Gravelords army to set on my friends in Age of Sigmar. So what are your thoughts on speed painting in this grimdark style? Is it just hype? Let me know in the comments below. And if you made it to the end of the video again, I want to thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna be doing this full time, so your subscriptions and likes really mean a lot to me and helps the channel grow. It really makes me happy to share all this with you, so keep painting and take care. <laughs>